You can just wantonly mock an entire genre without breaking the fourth wall with meta comedy. The Bard's Tale is a competent top-down hack and slash game. However, it shines brightest as a critique of the genre itself. The Bard is quick to point out an overdone stereotype. The Bard's Tale's main flaw is that, in condemning all of the most monotonous aspects of these types of games, it ends up being stuffed to the brim with them as well. Finally, it's excellent as criticism and commentary, but only passable as a game. Even yet, it does enough intriguing things to make its own existence worthwhile. while you wouldn't expect a combat game like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 to delve too deeply into metafiction, everything starts to make sense once Deadpool is added to the roster. Deadpool is up to his old shenanigans once again. He makes references to vintage X-Men arcade games, speaks directly to the camera, and uses his health bar to defeat the opponent as part of his superpower. It's not exactly a biting critique on game design, but it's still a lot of fun. While the majority of the Bioshock experience doesn't feel like a very meta piece of content, things change radically once you reach the ending. Bioshock's ending does an excellent job of re-examining player agency by asking what actions the protagonist has a chance to choose. This, of course, casts doubt on the player's own decisions. Player agency has grown increasingly significant in games since the release of Bioshock. Bioshock remains an intriguing experience worth exploring to this day. Would you please try it out for yourself as soon as possible if you haven't already? Eternal Darkness is known for having a sanity meter. It takes a toll on your mental health to deal with the stresses of this Lovecraftian environment. The game will eventually start to make objects appear that aren't there. Attacking the player's own understanding of what is real and what isn't. Including a meta element in the game is, quite honestly, excellent. It's not easy to portray a fictitious character's slipping grasp on reality, but when you're pushed to wonder what's real and what's not, the concept becomes crystal evident. The metafictional sanity mechanism in Eternal Darkness ultimately binds you to your character in a way that has rarely been seen in the medium. You know they have you when you start getting up from your sofa many times to see if you can catch that bug that keeps creeping on your screen. The Stanley Parable utilizes traditional narrative features and uses them as a hammer to disrupt the player's expectations. In the process, the game serves as a lighthearted critique of video games as a whole, raising questions about the types of linear interactions that make up games. It begs the question, what alternatives do we have? The way the game's narrator leads the protagonist, and how it becomes clear that there is no way to progress unscriptedly, has made this game a meta-narrative classic. It's also extremely entertaining, thankfully. When Lateral forcibly changes an antagonist's name to mid-boss, entirely replacing their name on the name card as well, and leaving them in stunned amazement, you know you're in for a game that largely relies on metafictional humor. Dizgia performs an outstanding job of parodying the JRPG genre's traditions. It's a great example of a game that breaches the fourth wall to offer satirical comments about the genre and its norms. The whole point of this game is to defy your expectations. It begins with a series of interactive challenges centered on debugging the game. You know you're in for a ride when your back button reaches the bottom of the screen. However, just as you think you've figured out what's going on and what the game is all about, you'll start playing Pony Island. Of course, the strangeness is only beginning at that moment. Pony Island is a game about playing a game, and it makes use of its meta features as a source of entertainment as well as a way to set up a variety of creative puzzles. It's an excellent application that performs quite well. While Metal Gear Solid 2 has a very basic storyline with enormous robots, terrorists, and vampires, things start to get a little odd near the conclusion. What had been a story of espionage and counter-terrorism up to this point had now included a plot hook in which at least part of the game 
was revealed to have taken part in a simulation. Colonel Campbell, who had earlier provided us with useful information on our assignment, has now instructed us to turn off the game. When the game reaches the final act, all bets are off, and the tail shifts gears, focusing almost entirely on choice and freedom. It's a shambles, but it's a magnificent shambles. The Monkey Island series has always been known for its irreverence. This features a lot of meta jokes that highlight the game's existence. Some of them included prompting you to insert a disc that didn't exist, or including a LucasArts support line within the game. The third game is one of the better examples of this. Guybrush comes into a hole that is just big enough for him to pop his head through during his quest. Where do we wind up as a result of this? Of course, back in the first Monkey Island. Guybrush's well-drawn head emerges out of a stump met in the original game, and we're not talking about the location. Guybrush has always been a self-aware character, so this is nothing new to him. However, this is one game brand that never got tired of reveling in the fact that it was a series of games. Traditionally, when playing a game, you are expected to make advantage of the available mechanics. Why would the mechanics be there if they weren't needed? But, with Undertale, we finally have a game that asks if just having a game mechanic available means you have to use it. Instead, rewarding players who defy the standard approach found in most RPGs. Undertale garnered a lot of accolades for its delightfully wacky story, clever reuse of bullet hell shooter combat, and killer soundtrack, but it's hard to imagine the game would have been a success if those meta components weren't so well exploited. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the page.